time for our worship team. I think it is so cool that we have students that lead us in worship, and I'm really excited that they get to come back and we get to hear them one more time. So I'm excited about that. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Abby. I'm the associate. Hey, Kobe. Hi, guys. Some of you know me. <laughs> but if I don't know you, I would love to. I want to know your name. So come introduce yourself to me, um, whether it's out there in lobby or just when I'm walking around. I just would love to learn. My goal is to learn all of your names. So help me out in that. Um, come introduce yourself. Maybe a fun fact so that I can keep trying to remember, especially if there's a lot of Emilys. I feel like that's usually a popular name. So give me a nice little fun fact for that. I already know you, though. So no, no, never forgettable. Uh, great. Well, I am really excited to be here. We are kicking off a brand new series. So last week we finished up Hello, My Name Is, and today we're kicking off Subject to Change, like we just saw the beautiful video for. So I'm really excited to start off talking about a subject that I know everyone is super excited to talk about. I know it's really common language. It's something that we all study and know a ton about, terms and conditions. And wait, terms and conditions, isn't that the thing that pops up when we download an app on our computer and that none of us really read, right? Has anyone ever read that? Show of hands, anybody? I am proud of you guys, okay? Because I am that person that hits the little agree on the right-hand side, hoping that it has nothing bad, no repercussions or consequences, and I move right along so I can start using what I just downloaded. So way to go, you guys. Um, there was also a lawyer who read the terms and conditions of Instagram. Um, and that app that we all use, a fun picture one. And here's what Instagram's terms and conditions say, okay? This is ridiculous. I mean, just hang on. Okay, other people might pay us, Instagram, to use your pictures, but we won't actually pay you. Okay, number one. And we might randomly delete your posts. Okay, so if you ever had a picture go randomly missing, probably not your fault, maybe Instagram. And we can force you to give up your username for any reason. Weird. Finally, we may share your personal information with other companies. So, Instagram sounds like a creep, right? <laughs> but I still have it downloaded on my phone and I still use it every day, you know, so it's awesome. Here's the kicker about all those terms and conditions, all those things I just said that Instagram lays out in their 5,000 5, word terms and conditions. All of those things are subject to change, okay? So Instagram's pretty much like, here's the deal, guys. These are all the things we say, you get it, you understand it, we're all on the same page, excellent. I had to take 5,000 words to explain that to you. By the way, we might change our mind tomorrow. So Instagram not only wanted to set up the rules, but now they wanna also break the rules. That just doesn't really seem fair. At the end of the day, we're still gonna use Instagram, so Abby, why is this important? Well, terms and conditions are subject to change. But they're not the only thing that's subject to change. Life is subject to change. We all experience that. We all have circumstances where we didn't see something coming and it blindsided us, and all of a sudden we're off track, things are rearranging. Change can be a really good thing though, right? But it can also be a really not good thing, almost kind of a sucky thing. A lot of us tend to avoid change. Maybe some of us have experienced change and all of a sudden we're moving and we're super excited. It's a good thing. We didn't really have a lot of great friends at our old school. We're ready to reset. Or maybe some of us just found out we're moving and this change is happening and we're not ready because we love where we're at right now and what's going on in our life. Or maybe we just made the team at tryouts and we're super excited. We're not a starter, but I'll still take it. And then a couple weeks in, we get injured. Not a great life change. Some of us, our bodies are changing, and that's awesome because we're taller, for some of us, not me included. But there's also a downside to that that no one really likes to talk about, so I'm not gonna dwell on it. For some of us, we have really good friendships. We went into this year and we found our very best friend. We had no idea they existed, and now we're best friends, and we're gonna be best friends forever, and it's awesome. And that was a really good change, and we're all about it. But for some of us, we just had a friendship fall apart and we really don't know why and we're not really sure how to fix it. This is all change that we experience. Whether you, it's happening right now, it's happened in the past, it might happen in the future, we're all subject to it. And there are three reasons why a lot of us tend to avoid change. That first reason is, it brings us to the unknown. 
we really don't like not knowing. Like that thing I was talking about, like we're moving all of a sudden, that could be a really great thing. We might find out next year that we are gonna meet our best friend in our new school. But we don't know that yet and we're afraid of the change because we don't know what's gonna happen. And we lose perspective in change, right? Sometimes when you're in the middle of a, in a situation that's changing, like maybe you right now, there's a big life change that's happening for you and your family, you at your house, maybe you at school, and you're caught up in it and it almost feels like you can't see anything else. We lose perspective, we can't see outside that change. It's almost like we have glasses on that are kind of cloudy. And we can't really figure out what's good or bad because we all look at it out of this place where it feels like the world is ending. And lastly, it causes us to realize that we're not really in control. We like to think we are. We work really hard to make sure that we are in control of our outcomes. We work hard in class or the best that we can, and if we're not good at that, we try to be good at sports or our electives, or at least we're a good kid, we're better than our sibling. We work really hard to make sure that we're in control, but when we find ourselves in a situation where change is happening, that's when we're closest to realizing that we're not in control. And a lot of us don't really like coming to this place where we recognize we're not in control. So, I'm gonna challenge you that the question is not how to avoid change. Because the reality is that all of us are subject to this change. The question that we're gonna ask is how do we get through change? And fortunately for us, the book of Hebrews, the New Testament and the Bible has something to say about that. But before we get to that, I would love to give you some background, some context to what this book is talking about. So thousands and thousands of generations ago, God chose this group of people called the Israelites to be his people. It was God's squad. These Israelites were God's people, his chosen people. And he wanted them to be set apart from the people around them. So he set up these rules for them to live by so that they not only had better lives, that they weren't healthier, that they weren't taken care of, weren't in um, better relationship with their God, but they were also set apart. They looked completely different than all the other people around them. The crazy thing about that, guys, God started off with 10 rules. We might have heard of them, the Ten Commandments. Hopefully we've heard of them. That group of 10 rules, it turned into 613 rules that they had to live by. And these rules, they had everything to do with what to wear, what not to wear, what to eat, what not to eat, who to talk to, who to not talk to, who to be friends with and in a relationship with, and how to worship. These rules were about everything, every aspect of life. Because God cared and he wanted these people to be set apart because they were his. For example, these rules about worship, they, when they came into their space, there was this inner space in their temple where they worshiped and only a certain group of people were in there where they were allowed to experience the presence of God. But they were elite. They were like a, even more chosen than God's chosen people. These rules were strict. God really wanted to make sure that it was clear to them that these, they were his people, that they were set apart. Fast forward a, a couple centuries and Jesus showed up. God came to earth as flesh and blood, as a human. And he walked on this earth and he was an example for us. And he died on the cross because he loved us so much. And he changed the rules forever. Now these Israelites these people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they didn't just have to follow the 613 rules. Those were done with, they only had to follow one person and it was Jesus. And these people were, I mean, that sounds awesome to us, right? Like, okay, 613, that sounds like a lot. They probably had to memorize all those. They were constantly checking themselves. Like, can you imagine if your parents sat you down and were like, okay, did you follow 541 today? No. But they'd been doing that for generations and generations. Their great-great-grandparents did the same thing. And now they were in this place where they only had to follow one person. It felt like God's laws and his, his rules that they had for him, they were subject to change. But the important thing to hold on to is that even though that was true, even though their circumstances and their understanding of how to live life had changed, God hadn't changed. He was the same God that his, their ancestors had, God had chosen them. 
And when he created the rules and the laws with them, the Ten Commandments and so on, he was the same God then that he was when he died on the cross. Their circumstances, their life had changed, but God hadn't changed. That's amazing to think about. And so we, we turn to this book of Hebrews, and the author, he knew what God was trying to get at with his people. He was making it really clear, and he, starts out, or he, he ends this letter saying this. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. That might seem like, okay, Abby, you're talking about change, all this thing, and then you throw up a verse about money. I don't really understand where that's coming from. These people, if they chose to follow Jesus, they could lose everything. They could lose their homes, their property, their money. They could be separated as a family. That's big change, guys. And what this he, this, the author of Hebrews is trying to say is like, hey, I get it. There's a lot going on and a lot of change and you feel caught up in it and you're losing perspective and it feels unknown. But get this. You can trust God. He's shown up in the past in your story. He doesn't change, even when your circumstances do. The author of Hebrews goes on to say, towards the end, he says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's something that the Jewish people of that time could hold on to then, but that they could hold on, that we can hold on to now. We're still in the today and the forever part. So even though there's a lot going on in our life, with our friends and our family, whatever it may be for you, I know that we go through a lot of change. I go through a lot of change. And maybe the way we experience God feels different, or maybe it feels like the way he talks to us changes. But you, what you have to remember, and what I'm asking you to hold on to, is that he, his character doesn't change. He's still the God that that started off with these people thousands and thousands of years ago, chose them, and has continued to love them. I really struggle sometimes remembering this. I just went through probably the most change I've ever gone through in my whole life. I moved from Grand Rapids, and I started a new job. I moved into someone's house that I didn't know, and I started meeting all of you, I had to completely start with new friends. My family lives five hours from here. My best friend in the whole world, two and a half hours away. Lots of change. And I was really thankful that a year and a half ago, I got this tattoo. If you want to see it more close, I was supposed to put up a picture, but I forgot, so come talk to me later. But I had to get it. I was so thankful that I had gotten this permanent reminder a year and a half. It's an evergreen tree. I love trees. But the reason I got this too wasn't because I love trees. It was because this evergreen tree, no matter if it is a hot summer day, the wind is just blowing just right, the birds are tweeting, or if it is the coldest day of the winter, the snow feels like it's pulling down the branches and the wind is howling everywhere. It's still evergreen. And it reminds me that no matter the season or the change that's going on in my life, God's character stays the same. It's important for us to remember and to recognize that because of all this change that we lose perspective. And so what are we gonna do about that? How are we gonna remind ourselves? Well, for some of you that are dancers or maybe cheerleaders or some sports need a lot of balance. I try to do yoga sometimes. <laughs> it's like a once a week thing, but I call myself a yogi. And there, <laughs> thanks Emily. There is this pose called the tree pose and I, will do, I would do it for you, but I mean, I don't have my mat or like my outfit, so it wouldn't be the same. But the important thing about that pose is that in order to do it successfully, in order to get the most from it, in order to be able to do it well, you have to pick a point on the back of the wall or outside, wherever you're practicing, you pick a point and you focus on it. And you draw your, all your attention there, and it helps you to balance. It keeps you stable. And so I know that each and every one of us have a time in our life where God has shown up. We're going to spend some time in small group unpacking and hopefully spending some time 
thinking about ways that God has shown up in our life. Maybe for some of us, that was when our family really needed money. Or maybe for some of us is where we prayed a prayer and we, we trusted that God was going to show up and he did. Or maybe it was in a relationship that we got to be friends again. Spend some time in your small group today thinking about that, and then I, I'm encouraging you to write them down on a note card and put it in a place that you'll see for you to focus on to keep you stable. I don't know if that's on the dashboard of your car or on the mirror in the bathroom, or maybe it's the background screen of your phone. But putting something in your life as a consistent reminder that no matter what, our life is going to change. But God's character God doesn't change. And we can trust in that and know that and we can be stable in that. I have one more thing I'd like to say to you guys. Change is hard and I'm not promising you that if you do this, if you do what I asked you to do and go to small group and write down the, the note card and put it where you see it, that that's the answer to the problem or that's the answer when it starts to, to feel overwhelming, or when we lose perspective, or when we are afraid of change. The truth that we talk about on stage doesn't make our problems go away. When we come to 621, when we t come to small group and spend time actually digging in, we are creating tools for ourselves for when we do get in situations that it's overwhelming. So that we have friends that are reminding us, hey, what did you write on your note card? Or you have a small group leader like, hey, I understand that you've got some stuff going on at home. Remember when we talked about that? Remember how we can trust, just like the Israelites did, that God doesn't change? That's why we come. That's why we engage in small groups, not to pretend like we have it all together and we always have the answers, but to recognize that we need tools and things to help us for when we do leave this place, that we don't have our small group leader or our friends right next to us but that we can remember that God's next to us and we can trust on him because he's shown up in our lives and our friends' lives and we can look in the Bible too. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for words in a book that we read that are reminders that life is ever-changing but you don't change. That we can look at story after story after story. We can look in our friends' lives, in our parents' lives, in our siblings' lives, and then we can see how change affects them, but that we can trust in who you are and what you've said. That we can know that you love us and you show up for us and you show us that. So God, I just pray for who's in this place experiencing change, that they feel overwhelmed of the unknown, that they feel like they can't see past or out of this perspective, that they feel like they need to be in control, that they can be reminded that they can trust in the one who is in control, you. That they can find their stability and strength in you. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross that we can even be here that we know and can be confident in the love that you have for us. And thank you that you've invited us to be in a relationship with us. Just you, not 613 rules, just you. We pray this in your heavenly name, amen.